Welcome to CABER, or Center for Advanced Building Envelope Research. My name is Cynthia Cruikshank. I'm a professor at Carleton University in the Mechanical and Aerospace Engineering Department, and I am the director and lead researcher here at CABER. Um, so we are located at Bell's Corners, Ottawa, on the Chemnet Energy Campus. We are working in partnership with Natural Resources Canada to investigate ways of designing and building better buildings. And when I say better buildings, I mean things like more resilient buildings, healthier buildings. We are not only looking at new construction and new materials, which uh, are interesting in terms of how can we use low embodied carbon materials, for example, to meet greenhouse gas uh, emission targets, but we are also looking at the low hanging fruit, which is really the retrofits. Now we have over 14 million dwellings that currently exist in the building envelope, many uh, building environment, I should say, and many of them don't meet building the energy efficient standards within the building code. So how can we retrofit those buildings in a way that's non-disruptive to the occupants, um, but also in an affordable way? So this facility itself sort of has three main parts. The first part is the guard hall box and climate chamber. So you can see those over my left shoulder. So this piece of equipment is used to uh, simulate the indoors and the outdoors. And we typically usually have just a building envelope sample in between those two pieces of equipment. And then the, uh, the uh, building envelope sample, and when I mean building envelope sample, I mean things like walls, windows, doors, anything that pr uh, protects you from the exterior. So we have that building envelope sample in between those two uh, essentially chambers, and then we can measure how much heat actually is traveling through that building envelope wall. Um, another part to our lab is a pressurized spray rack. So that is over my right shoulder over here. Um, so this pressurized spray rack is also two stories high, just like our guarded hot box. And this uh, piece of equipment is used to measure for example, how quickly a sample would dry when uh, water penetrates in it, um, looking at the resiliency of the building envelope sample, looking at points of failure. Um, so in this piece of equipment, we spray water onto that uh, piece of building envelope or that wall sample uh, to just to understand how heat, air, and moisture travel through it. The third part of the lab is our in situ openings where we can uh, do long-term performance of building envelopes. So the building envelope samples that go in the guarded hot box and pressurized spray rack are four by seven meters. Uh, the ones shown here behind me uh, outlined by that caution tape are ones that are three meters by three meters. Um, so first what we're going to do is go to the guarded hot box and I'll tell you a little bit more about it. So as I mentioned a little bit earlier, the test samples uh, that we put in the guarded hot box are four by seven meters. Uh, so this is by far one of the largest facilities in North America to be able to look at two stories. So looking at the connection between the floors, for example. Um, within, so the, uh, the guarded hot box itself is, uh, again, it represents the indoors and the climate chamber uh, to my left here is uh, representative of the outdoors. Um, so this climate chamber can go, it can range in temperatures from minus 40 degrees C to uh, plus 55 degrees C. Um, there's also um, controls that we can go from 10 to 90% relative humidity. We also have 91 solar lamps so that we can actually have solar heat input. So you can see the lamps behind me there as well. So we can test things like the uneven heating of wall samples, for example, really to try to replicate real life uh, scenarios. Um, so this is our climate chamber. Again, we would normally have a magazine uh, with the building envelope sample. So when I say magazine, I mean as a frame to hold that building envelope sample. And to my uh, right here is the actual guard hot box. Now you'll notice that this guarded hot box is essentially a box inside of another box. Um, so the smaller box is called the metering box. And that metering box sits just flush to the actual building envelope sample. Um, so it would, out of the four by seven meter sample, it would be able to measure the heat transfer through three by six meters of that sample. Um, so again, one of the largest that you will find in North America. Um, so uh, within the uh, metering box and guard hot box, we have over 500 thermocouples. So those are used to measure temperature. 250 uh, thermal piles, so that's to measure th temperature differences. And we also have a number of uh, heat flux sensors that would be actually within our wall sample as well. 
So how it works, again, we have our uh, outdoor essentially simulator, which is our climate chamber. We would have our indoor simulator, which is our guard hot box. Um, again, the fact that it's a box inside of a box really um, eliminates any sort of 2D transfer, heat transfer out. So we really promotes that heat transfer to go through that wall sample that you're trying to test. Um, and so one of the examples of a, a building envelope wall that you could use or, or test is, for example, a calibration sample. So we just finished construction here at Kaber. Um, so right now we're in the calibration and commissioning phase. So if you look over here, uh, you will see one of our calibration samples. So here, for example, we have uh, four inches of uh, expanded polystyrene. Um, so poly, uh, expanded polystyrene is uh, an insulation material, but it has very consistent properties. So we can use a material like this to measure how well, for example, um, how knowing the answer basically before we actually do the test, we can test how, how well the heat will, uh, will pass through that material. Um, so we're using it for calibration samples, but again, normally a building envelope wall, you would have much, a few other layers as well, obviously, in that. Uh, but that's just one example of a building envelope sample. Um, so to transfer the building envelope sample from the guard hot box and climate chamber to our next piece of equipment, which I'll talk to you about, which is a press pressurized spray rack, uh, we also use a overhead crane. So we have a 16 ton crane that we use, so you can see it up at the top of the lab. Um, so we use that to transfer our, uh, our building envelope samples from one side of the lab to the other. Um, and so the, uh, you know, for example, within the building, um, with, for a building envelope test sample, we could have maybe test, for example, the thermal performance of maybe using traditional materials, a, a traditional um, mock-up, uh, and then maybe uh, test maybe a new solution or new panelized approach to making a retrofit or, um, some, or some prefabricated materials. And so we test that within the guard hot box. We then move it along to what's called the pressurized spray rack, which is over here. And then we can test when it undergoes uh, some type of weather event. So for example, a heavy rainstorm, we can actually see how fast does it dry out? Um, how does water uh, absorb through that sample? Where again are the points of failure? How resilient it is? And then, uh, so what we'll do now is that we will show you um, how it works. Uh, so right now we have a piece, a piece of plastic that uh, essentially cover, uh, this is where normally you would have the building envelope um, wall, for example. So we have a piece of plastic just to show you again how, how the water would flow onto that wall. Uh, we have 96 spray nozzles uh, to spray water evenly over that wall samples. And again, to understand how heat, air, and moisture will travel uh, through that wall sample. So we're just starting up the pressurized spray rack now. So you, if you come closer, you'll be able to see it a little bit better. So we can also look on the side of the um, pressurized spray rack as a side view. And we also have a ship's door that we can walk through to uh, have a better appreciation of what it looks like inside. So as I mentioned, there are 96 nozzles. We can adjust uh, the, excuse me, the flow rate of the nozzles. Um, so that we can adjust it if we want heavier rain on one side or at one level compared to another. Um, so the next part of the lab that I want to show you are the in situ openings. Um, so if you walk with me, I'll show you those right now. Um, so again, the purpose of these in situ openings is really to look at the long-term performance of a lot of these building envelope samples. So perhaps you want to compare um, sort of traditional built wall 
to one um, where you want to test maybe a, a new type of material that's integrated within those wall samples. So often when we're working with builders, we want to make sure that we basically bulletproof some of these wall concepts so that we de-risk uh, these materials, these new types of materials that potentially will not be used in the building industry. Um, but are, um, could really provide a lot of benefits if they were. So we don't want to basically create one solution for something but introduce another problem, right? So we are always working closely uh, with builders, uh, with other uh, universities and colleges, as well as government organizations to make sure that um, we are uh, having an impact uh, on, the, uh, on the research. So, these in-situ walls in the back uh, fit samples that are three meters by three meters. So we actually have six that are laid out around the actual lab. We have four on the south wall and two on the west wall. And again, we can use these for comparative testing. So for example, we could have a traditional wall and then have maybe a new concept uh, just, to this, just to the side of it and they would undergo the same outdoor conditions. So on the other side of the wall is the outdoors, right? So it could go through maybe, it could be placed there maybe for a year and go through one full winter, one through full summer uh, season, for example. Um, some of our other ideas is to build out little rooms behind some of these in-situ openings so we could test things like occupant comfort, thermal comfort, looking at solar uh, input into the room, looking at things like phase change materials within the wall samples. So lots of really interesting projects going on here at Kaber. Um, so that concludes our virtual tour today of Kaber. Um, I want to thank you for joining me uh, on this tour today. If you have any questions about our lab or like to visit, or have any um, interest in becoming uh, a partner with us and doing some interesting research together, please reach out to us at uh, carlton.ca slash caber. Thanks very much.